Hello everybody, this is Dr. Stephen Holland and in this short video I want to show you the power of data collection. It's a nice uh, power that uh, online learning uh, presents uh, and helps instructors to use formative assessment, you remember what that is, uh, assessing material while the assignment is underway as well as summative assessment after it has been completed for improvement for the next time that it is offered. And I, along with Dr. Beth Richter, uh, took a look at this several years ago for teaching Composition 1, and uh, we worked along with Pearson to develop this approach. Now, I bring it up to you in this time because many of you will be using data collection software to help you shape your learning for individual students and classrooms as a whole. Let's just very briefly show you the power of this. Now this is what's called a Learning Outcomes Manager tool and on your screen is a series of boxes. You will see green boxes, you'll see yellow boxes, and down in the corner over here there is a there is a what they all call orange but it's more like a gold color that uh, indicates where different students are in a certain essay assignment. Now in this class there's five essays and this was uh, collected, this is a demo, this is completely a demo course and so you can kind of see what's going on here with the uh, constructs. So you, earlier in the class I showed you the rubric that we use for Composition 1 and this is basically a uh, computerized version of that rubric. That is we have 16 data points that we're collecting and these numbers won't mean much to you but I will tell you at the outset that this is a thesis. This is the thesis. So here is the thesis point for all of my students in this particular Comp 1 class, this demo class for the point of presentations, you understand. Uh, you can see that uh, in this case there were four essays that had com been completed and this is the average score for each of those students after four essays. So we have a four point scale and you can see green here is quite good. We want students to be at this green mark uh, most indeed. We are satisfied if they're at the three mark out of four which is basically the B, B minus average. But of course we want all students to do very very well. We set high expectations. You see down here uh, this particular student is having some issues and so it needs some remedial work. Now this is uh, interesting to look at here because we are looking at uh, this now um, vertically. So this is uh, how a student is doing on a particular point, thesis, and, but we can also look at it horizontally across the class to see how these students are doing on each of these data points for Learning Outcomes Manager. So it's a very, very quick look at it. We can look at the individual student. We can look at the class as a whole. So if we move on to the next slide, you can see that the objectives are stated here. Uh, these are, by the way, the very same objectives I use as an individual rubric, that is without the machine collecting information and transforming the information into something that uh, is very quickly usable for my eyes so I can determine how the class is doing and how individuals are doing. So here is uh, scores for the entire class. Again, we look at that thesis and the class and, uh, at, after, after four essays is uh, 2.75. Again, remember this is a demo. So it's 2.75 and I can tell uh, I have more work to do with my students on the thesis. And we can go up down the scale for each of these different uh, points that we have collected on collected data points and we can make some determination as to where the students are. You can see that well this group has some work to do uh, proofing, proofreading skills that need to still be developed. The data collected can include mean, median, and mode. Mean of course is another average, what students are doing on average. The median is uh, uh, means that half the students are above this mark and half the students are below it. And mode means that there is a number that, is, that more students, most students are, are hitting. 
So this case, uh, this particular uh, demonstration shows, hey, the students are doing pretty well because a bunch of them have hit the mode. Uh, they're about a three out of four in the, in the medium. That means half are above it and half are below it. The weighted mean we'll ignore for right now. So this is uh, how the group is doing, uh, a whole number. We look at the ends of stasis, and we, here we have one, two, three, and four. You remember, I want them above this break here. I want them three and four. And uh, we break this down, we can see uh, in this particular class that there are seven students uh, above the three and two above the, uh, 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 at, at four. And so we have some work to do here in this particular demo. Uh, illustrates that we have some students down at the two range and one down at the uh, three, uh, three students down at the one point range. So you see this is a problem at this point in the semester. This just means that this will be presented five times throughout the semester. So we hope that one of our goals is to move these students up the higher level three three and above now what I'm trying to point out to you is how how quickly the data can be collected and how quickly you can um, decide how your how well the class is doing uh, teachers often said well they're doing so well this they're doing this and this they kind of feel that way about it but this uh, confirms or uh, expands those feelings with evidence and uh, I have to say that I've been using this maybe eight or nine years now, and I was um, kind of surprised that uh, w that it identified some some of those kinds of issues for me where I thought the students were doing well in my own mind. By using the data, I was able to see, oh, you know, I've been largely not seeing this particular area that needs development. And in this case, I remember it was uh, paragraphing. So some of my students were doing quite well with paragraphing, and some of them were doing uh, pretty poorly in the paragraphing. And I, I was able to identify those that still need to work with paragraphs skills and give them uh, that immediate help in various ways, and they improved. And the success, uh, discuss, uh, I would say, uh, the class uh, showed that where maybe we get you know seven, eight, or nine out of twenty-eight students having to drop because they felt that they weren't succeeding. Now it was not common that we'd have students a classroom of say twenty-eight that we might lose one or two because they were getting individual uh, 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 help that they needed. This is just a chart that I um, developed, and I decided that my uh, breakpoint would be three point two out of four. Okay, so. I wanted students to be at a 3.2 and all the 16 collected data points I collect. And you see in the bottom such things as thesis, uh, strategy, uh, essay strategy, diction, tone and style, uh, what they did in introduction and conclusion. I won't read the rest, but that gives you an idea how the data points are uh, setting up uh, as the results. And uh, also this was um, uh, done off of an Excel spreadsheet and I can quickly look now. You can see that, well, here um, some of the students, a good, a good portion of the students have trouble with tone and style. I have to uh, get them more consistent on that. Here's some still issues with proofing, and that's kind of problematic because what happens is there might be two or three different things that students uh, have trouble with in their proofing, but they do it constantly over and over again. By eliminating those two or three things, this this mark will jump. But I noticed that you know most of my classes the last eight or nine years, it, this is it. This is a real problem, and we have to we have to continue to address it. Now this is after three essays in this particular demo course that I'm showing you at the moment. But by and large, the students are doing pretty well because they're they're at that mark, 3.2 or a bet, a better. And I, I communicate that with the students and say, hey, I want you at this point by each of you by the, the end of the semester. And, uh, and and that has happened. It's amazing. It's happened by identifying what is the problem, what are the problem areas for students. It also helps you to set up how to uh, correct those problems by giving them more individual uh, attention. And then this again is just the same chart, but it's done with a traditional uh, bar chart approach and uh, you can see here that uh, in three essays or the students again this indicates the proofing issue that we talked about a moment ago and this was the tone and style issue in the third essay but you can see uh, students you know these these would recognize that these bars are different the columns are different 
essays that are assigned and then you can see where the students were improving and how they how they dropped off uh, in in, a, in, a, in an assignment and that can change from semester to semester but generally there is this sort of nice progression uh, upward throughout the semester uh, because students get better and better and you know, we'd hope that's so and it is the case they get better and better because they're practicing their skills through a set of five essays so that very quickly is a look at uh, uh, how a data collecting um, system can help develop your uh, students work and uh, how effectively it can be applied in online learning with the use of the computer.